Well, hello there. Hello again. Nice to be back. I'm going to have to be quite quietly tonight. There's a reason for that that I'll get to later in the video. But I wanted to do a wee thing today just to share with you something that is exciting me quite a lot. I really don't quite know how it's going to go. If you know me and my personal tastes at all, you might well know that I have a particular penchant for Belgian beers and particularly Trappists. Rough for 10 is one of my favourite beers of all time, if not. It's, it's one of those beers where if you put me against a wall, a third of the day you'd say Rough for 10. It's superb and sublime and wonderful. So Trappist beers um, always excite me, they always interest me. And this year we have a new a new brewery entering the roster of, of the Trappists. It's a very, very slight group. There's only 11 in the world. This is number 11. It is... Tint Meadow, made at a Mount Saint Abbey, is eh, Mount Saint Abbey, <laughs> Mount Saint Bernard Abbey, eh, in it's an LE postcode, so I presume in Leicestershire. Yeah. It's a yeah English English Trappist ale, words I never thought I'd see in combination on a bottle of beer. But there we are. I'm excited. I remember just only a handful of years ago when it was only really the Belgians and the Trap, really, were, were the big ones, that, that you would ever call Trappists. And now there's Austrians and Italians and Americans, and now, and now an English one. I'm rather looking forward to it. It's interesting to see that growth in what's kind of, by definition, quite a conservative sector. Now, to be called a Trappist beer, as I discovered today, there's actually almost two levels to it. You can use the word Trappist if you're part of the International Trappist Association, but to get the logo, the authentic Trappist product logo, um, you have to create the product within the boundaries of the Abbey, pretty much. It has to be done within the, uh, or rather under the supervision of the monks and nuns there. And it has to... Uh, the, pro the money from it has to be used specifically for upkeep of the Abbey or for their way of life or for charitable purposes. In other ways, it can't really make a profit. There's also other things. There's, I believe there's a kind of quality criterion that has to be fulfilled as well. Tim Meadow is incredibly new. And as I realised earlier, that blank hexagon there, I'm not entirely sure quite what that means, because it's the same shape as the Authentic Trappers Product logo, but it doesn't have the words Authentic Trappers Product in it. So I'm guessing, because they're new, they're waiting on that licence coming out for them to use it. They're, they're still making the making the money for it eh, and selling it, because because they made it, they might as well sell it. Eh, but I suspect they're waiting on the licence to be able to put that logo in, and that's like a placeholder for where it's going to go. Either way, they do get to call it Trappist because they are part of the International Trappist Association. I'm really looking forward to this. They say they've made it in sort of ref or rather with reference to some of the kind of classic Belgian beers of the past. A it certainly sounds like a kind of double kind of thing. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it's gonna go, how it's gonna play out. So let's crack it open and see what we, see what we think. I'm gonna use because it's a trap, I'm going to use my Rochefort glass for this one. It's, it's a very old glass, this one, actually. Um, the new ones, those I've been for the last five years, are getting wider and shallower than this. It's a glass I, don't, I really like. So let's see. We'll also say, just before we kick off, that I really like the bottle shape. It looks like a 500 on this. It's actually a 33cl. Um, but I like the shape, the kind of stout body and the very kind of dramatically tall, thin neck. Um, I like the kind of logo that I've got on it. I like the design, the kind of calligraphy quill design. I like the uh, silhouette underneath of the landscape. I think it's really quite cool. It's very, very, um, it's almost exactly what you'd expect from a Trappist in that it's striking enough to sell the product to let you know what it is, but not over the top. It's not going to throw ta beer, beer, beer at you. So let's see if we make it. Okay, first test passed, it hasn't squared all over me. Some Belgian beers do have quite a lot of carbonation, but as I find the downside to them. 
And let's see what. That's an excellent noise. That's quite kind of coppery colored. It's up there because it is, it is a real ale, this one. It is a uh, fermenting in a bottle. Set back to fermentation. Put that there. So it certainly looks apart very much has that kind of deep brown colour that you would expect from a, a classic Belgian double ale. Um, And yet, there's something definitely English there. There's something of the brown ale, the English, the kind of classic English brown in there. There's a kind of almost sort of dank, musty celery note in amongst all the, the upfront notes of fig and plum that you would normally expect. From, ooh, that's all very nice. There's a wee bit of kind of wee heavy in there as well. Hmm. Let's see, here we go. Oh, I like that. That is really, really smooth. That's very well crafted, actually. Very, very well made. Quite chocolatey in the end. Hmm. Yeah. It's kind of, there's that plummy note. Hmm. There's plum and anise. A wee bit of licorice in there. And then, and then the sweetness from that kind of dies out. It dries out, I should say. And you're left with a, a certain sort of almost savoury gaminess to it. But then kind of cocoa powder and chocolate on the end. It's not sickly, it's not cloying. The body is just full enough to carry these flavours without seeming seeming silly. Um, it's not overcarbonated, which, like I say, can be the kind of downfall with beers of the silk often. Um, it reminds me a bit of kind of Draquair, actually. Uh, the sort of the, the Scotch ale that you get from Draquair, things like Jacobite and so on. I certainly got that pleasantly vegetal, almost herbaceous note, which again reminds me of kind of sort of dank cellars and things. Dank in the kind of classic use of the word. Mm. I think that was rather lovely actually. That's very nice. It's obviously, in comparison with the Belgians, it's hard to compare with the Belgians because it's not a Belgian beer and it's not trying to be. That's the really interesting thing with this, is it takes its kind of cues, its starting points maybe, from things like Le Trap Double or West Mal Double or Ross Four Six, something like that. Um, but it is decidedly English at heart. It's got these kind of classic domestic um, characters in there. There's bits of English bitter, bits of ESB, um, Bits of brown ale, like I said, bits of Scotch ale and be heavy. Bits of kind of Scottish 80 shilling as well, actually. That's not getting 80 shilling. Just, yeah. I like that a lot. That's very impressive. So, yeah, on the bottle, they say, um, with this beer, we have returned to a 19th century tradition of brewing in Arabi. Uh, when our brethren, I love to use the word brethren, when our brethren arrived in 1835, they settled in a poor cottage on Tint Meadow now an extension of our monastic enclosure. And I don't know when they say they settled in a poor cottage. I don't know if they mean a cottage for the poor or a cottage of just low quality. I'm not entirely sure. But either way, that's where Tim Meadow gets his name. Like I say, it's brewed by the monks of Mount St. Bernard Abbey, which uh, is that famous part down in the south of England where it's like Mount Rushmore, but instead of four heads, just one massive dog. Schnorbitz. Um, and yes, the reason, the reason I'm kind of talking quite quietly is that it does say, quite curiously, uh, the strong dark ale re in the bottle, store in a cool, dark, quiet place, and pour gently at 9 degrees Celsius, it's, it's round about that, and I did pour gently, as you saw, 
Uh, we are stored in a cool, dark, quiet place. How wonderfully Belgian is that? How, how wonderfully uh, Trappist is that? The Trappist monks have always been, you know, they, they like their silence, they like their work. Uh, the whole thing, they are Benedictine monks, so they follow the teachings of St. Benedict, who said something along the lines of, they shall live by the fruit of thine hands, something along those lines. That's why they manufacture things. Uh, but yes, they do like, so they're, they're very kind of studious and worky, or when they're not working, they're praying, or when they're not working, they're praying, they're sleeping, and that's basically the, the very, <laughs> very condensed life cycle of a, of a Travis monk. But yeah, so in a cool, dark, quiet place, uh, which means if I do this, <gasps> let's try it now. Yeah, it's pissed now, ruined. Any exposure to loud noise completely ruins it, and that's a shame. Well, I'm going to sit here and enjoy this this now ruined bottle of muck because it's been exposed to loud noise. And I will see you in the next video. Well, I won't see you because I'm filming, but uh, I shall catch you anon and on and on in a different video. Cheerio and tulip.